It's possible to perform meshtastic firmware updates over the air, but you better practice on the ground. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. Recently, my club purchased two of these Seed Studio solar nodes, and we intend to put those up on a couple of radio towers here in my county. So I was tasked with the job of figuring out how to do over-the-air updates once these things are on the tower. I'd never done this before, and it was something I needed to figure out, but I'm glad I did it on the ground. Now, before we get into this video, don't skip through this video, because if you miss a step in this process, it is very likely that you can leave the node in a mode where you can't recover it without physical access to the node. So I definitely recommend doing this on the ground first before you put one of your nodes up on the tower. Twice I got the node left in DFU mode where it would not reboot without me plugging the thing into my laptop to being able to recover it. So hopefully this video is going to save you that trouble assuming you uh, follow all of the steps. Now, another thing I've got to say right up front is this video, if you're watching it a year or so after I have put it out, there may be changes. Uh, right now, we can already do over-the-air updates with iPhones right in the Meshtastic app, but on Android, it's quite a bit different. So I suspect that's going to change. Again, if you're watching this and it's maybe over a few months old, I would recommend doing your homework and making sure this is still the current way to do things. So the first thing I did was I went over to the SenseCap Solar Node page and I was trying to figure out exactly what kind of board it used. In this case, it's using an NRF 5284 board. And armed with that information, I went ahead and went over to the Meshtastic website for the NRF 52 OTA firmware updates. Pay attention to this caution right up at the top. It does say that these OTA firmware updates come with an increased risk of failure. So you may, even though you do everything right, it might fail on you and you may have to come get uh, or go get the thing off of the tower anyway. But it's at least worth trying this method first after you understand how it's done and you've had success on the ground. Right below that, you'll see a section for Android and for Apple. Now, I'll be using Android today. If you're going to be using an Apple device, click right here and this will give you all of the instructions that you need. For Android, uh, it's a little bit different because like I said earlier, we can't do this through the app. We need this Nordic Semiconductor app uh, and specifically we need version 4.24.3. You can find that on their GitHub page, so I did go ahead and go over to the GitHub page and I downloaded this APK file right here. You will need to sideload this on your Android device. You're not going to be able to get this from the App Store. And uh, this is absolutely required in order to do this OTA update using your Android device. Now, the last piece of the puzzle before we get started is to go over to meshtastic.org forward slash downloads. And guys, I will leave links to every single one of these pages down in the description below. When you get to this page, you're going to scroll to the very bottom, and I'm going to just grab the latest stable version. So go ahead and click this download stable version, and that's going to bring you over to the Meshtastic firmware GitHub page. We're going to scroll down until we find the list here. And remember, we're working with an NRF 5284 board. So you'll see that firmware right here. There's a lot of different ones here. Make sure you're getting the one, uh, the firmware specific for your particular board. But in my case, it is this one right here. So let's go ahead and download that file. Once you have that zip file downloaded and extracted, go ahead and open up the extracted folder. And you should see the Seed Solar Studio file that ends in OTA.zip, which is this one right here. Now, we do need to move this to our Android device. By far, the easiest way to do that is using an app called LocalSend. LocalSend will allow you to move files or folders or text across a wireless network. So I've got uh, local send opened up right here. I've clicked on the send tab over here on the left and I'm just going to go find that file. 
again, we're looking for this firmware seed solar node 2.7. In this case, that's the latest, but the primary thing is that file ends in OTA.zip. So we simply select it there, click open, and then right down here, you'll choose the device you want to send it to. In my case, I'm going to send it over to the Graphene OS. All right, so I've gone ahead and connected the MeshTastic app to the node that we want to update. And I just want to take a quick look at that by scrolling down. And you'll see that the current version installed is 2.6.9 and the latest stable is 2.715, which is what we just downloaded. Now, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect from this particular node. You cannot be connected to it with another uh, application when you try to do this uh, firmware update over the air. Now that we're disconnected, let's go ahead and open the other app. Once we're in this app, we need to make one change. And this change is the one that uh, tripped me up several times and left the node in a mode to where I couldn't recover it if I didn't have physical access to it. So up at the top left corner, you want to click the three lines. And let's come down to settings. Let's come down to DFU options. And right here, you'll see the number of packets is five. By default, I believe this was set to 10, and that is the one thing that caused me a lot of grief when I was trying to get this figured out the first time. So be sure that you set the number of packets to 5. Now let's go ahead and go back to the main screen here, and you'll see that B8E1 right there is the second option. I'm going to go ahead and click Connect to that. Give it just a second to connect. The next thing we need to do after it's connected is we need to hit that DFU option right up in the top right corner. It's got the two chasing arrows around it. We'll go ahead and click on that. The next thing we do is we tell it this is a distribution packet zip file. So leave that option checked, which is the default, and say OK. The next thing it's going to do is it's going to open up your file explorer on your Android device. So now we just need to find that firmware that we sent over with local send a while ago, and I'm going to touch on it. And now this process is going to start. Now, guys, this process takes roughly 10 minutes. It is a very slow process. I believe we're only getting like 1.5 kilobits per second Oh, uh, for this transfer. So it does take it about 10 minutes. I'm not going to make you endure that, but I will fast forward through this portion of the video. Oh, a quick note while this is running. Uh, there was something that I read. I might have been on the Apple side of things that said, don't let your screen go to sleep. It might disrupt the process. So I am going to verify that I keep the screen on during this entire process. Hey, don't forget while we're waiting on this to finish up that I put out a weekly newsletter. You can subscribe to it down in the description below, and it's often got follow-ups to videos like this. All right, we should be getting the disconnect message here in just a second. We're at 99% on the download. There's the disconnect, and hopefully with any luck, we're going to be getting some blinking blue lights right here in just a second if the camera doesn't wash them out. Yep, there's the blinking blue lights. Let's go ahead and reconnect to the MeshTastic app and just verify that that firmware upgrade was successful. Be sure in this app that we use to update the firmware that we click the disconnect and then close this app entirely. We'll go back over to the MeshTastic app and let's go ahead and connect to that B, uh, B8E1. We'll give it just a second here to connect and let's go ahead and check out that firmware. And we're on the latest 2.7.15. So hopefully this video will save you some grief and show you how to successfully use the over-the-air update feature with MeshTastic. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.